Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Liz Sheridan is a professional dancer, American film actress, Seinfeld icon, romantic author, and a renowned TV mom. Many would remember her role as a cantankerous neighbour. Meet Liz Sheridan, the heroic Jerry's mother, your favourite Mrs. Ochmonic of Alf that kept you glued to your TV as you speculate her next move. She has a love secret that no one knew until she wrote a book. Why Liz Sheridan and James Dean's love had to end. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Liz Sheridan is a character that almost everyone will like for her genuine display of passionate expression in her on-screen appearances. She became a household name following her wonderful and extended TV drama performances. Sheridan did so well in every aspect of her career journey. She sings, dances and does horse races too. She made several Broadway productions, a historic dancer she was. This fine American actress incorporated creativity in her decades-long acting career that also involved stage actions both on large and small screens. She's also got a fair share in life as she enjoyed a long lifespan before her demise. Amanda Hendon, her longtime pal and agent, while confirming her death, said that Sheridan died while asleep of normal causes. But her legacy remains, including her only daughter, who was left behind to mourn her death, being that she already lost her husband, Dale Wales, sometime in 2003. Before her death, Sheridan had already retired from TV and film actions. Those who follow her, cast as the grumpy fellow citizen on NBC's ALF, will attest to her dedication to the show. No wonder she continues to appear in roughly three dozen episodes. Her creative talent was obvious, both to her fans and bookmakers, as she was said to have gotten another wonderful offer thereafter. This time with Seinfeld, she took the personality of a tender, caring and sometimes confused mother of Jerry. She actively participated in over 20 episodes that span from episode 2, known as The Stakeout, at the start of season 2, up to the finale sometime in 1998. Within Seinfeld's period, Sheridan played the voice of Mrs. Stillman in that 1994-1998 animated sitcom Life alongside Louie, featuring Louis Anderson, a comedian and Emmy winner, who was later reported to have died at the age of 68. Interestingly, Sheridan also became an author, not just an author, but a romantic author, as available in her memoir that detailed her early romance with famous breakthrough rebel star James Dean around the 1950s. The book, which she published in 2000, titled Dizzy and Jimmy, My Life with James Dean, covers a historical account of how it began with him, what happened, and how it ended, thereby confirming the rumoured mutual love affair that existed between them at the period. How she met the then 21-year-old Indiana farm guy who was in New York for a Hollywood assignment, what happened thereafter, was more than a magical connection, as she has also described him as her first and true love, even though circumstances beyond their control played a better part in the relationship that saw her lose the one person she cherished so much. Sheridan was not just an on-screen personality. She had a somewhat balanced social life with few close pals. Dizzy, as she was fondly called by friends, had a useful acquaintance with bewitched star Elizabeth Montgomery. She was one of her close allies and long-time buddy. Elizabeth Ann Sheridan, an adoring American actress widely known as Liz Sheridan, was born somewhere in Rye, New York, on the 10th of April 1929, to Frank Sheridan, described as a classical pianist, and Elizabeth Poole Jones, her mother who was a vocalist. She grew up in her custody in Westchester County, New York, because her parents got a divorce at the time. She was still tender. During this period, those around her christened her Dizzy, which is an easy way of calling the name Elizabeth, a name that she soon adopted as a nickname. Some say the name came from Dizabeth, which is how her sister was able to pronounce her name when they were young, hence the shortened version that becomes Dizzy. 
Talking about her childhood recently before her death, Sheridan recalled growing up in a broken home, where her father would occasionally visit their Westchester County home, perhaps on Sundays to take them out for a banquet or the likes. The two young parents, she had imagined, didn't quite get it right between themselves, so it has to be that way. There is no record of her early education, but Sheridan started a fruitful professional life as a nightclub dancer and singer, and became famous for that within the 1950s. She was said to have spent her productive days living and working in the Caribbean. It was reported that at the beginning of 1953, Sheridan left New York City for the Virgin Islands, where she resided for some time at St. Thomas, then to Puerto Rico. She was said to have made a living actively working as a dancer and occasionally singing and using the piano. The outings which she did with a neighbour who owned a dance band were said to have won her a dance contest, where she composed for the first carnival in St. Thomas, plus a $600 reward for ultimate in a horse race over her stallion, Generale. When she returned to New York sometime in the latter part of the 1960s, she took part in one of Julius Monk's annual cabaret reviews that were held at Plaza 9 in the Plaza Hotel, while also appearing in dramas and musical activities on Broadway. Recall how she made excellent collaborations with other actors at the time. After the production of the musical Happy End with contradictory Christopher Lloyd and that young Meryl Streep in 1977, Sheridan relocated to Los Angeles. Now she was closer to Hollywood, and working tirelessly she featured in a number of supporting roles in more than a dozen films. Soon she would become a name as she built her fans' base en route to prominence. Within the period, she also appeared in about 60 prime-time network TV movies and dramas. Notable among the series would include Kojak, Archie Bunker's Place, New Heart and Sent Elsewhere. Her presence was also felt in Moonlighting, The A-Team, Hill Street Blues and Who's the Boss? Not also forgetting The Murder, Cagney and Lacey, Family Ties, Double Rush and She Wrote. But what many have described as a breakthrough came when she made her first key role as a curious neighbour, Raquel Ochmanek on the NBC TV runs ALF between 1986 and 1990. Everyone who watched her in that series knew that her time to shine had come, as she soon secured an outstanding role that lasted for a long time as Jerry's protective mother in Florida, known as Helen, on Seinfeld and was reported to have been part of all nine seasons which were aired between 1990 and 1998, and became the only actor to achieve such a fit minus the four people that were lead characters in the series. But most importantly, Sheridan was the last surviving performer that acted as one of the parents of the Seinfeld key cast members. Then came 2009, co-starring together with Andy Griffith and Doris Roberts in that romantic comedy concerning a widowed grandpa trying to learn dating tricks from his serial romancer of a grandson. The film was known as Play the Game. It, however, got negative attention for having an intimate scene between Sheridan and Griffith. Working as a nightclub dancer in New York was not as easy as she would have wanted, but she made do with what she had. A lot of things that happened back then could never have been revealed, if she has not revealed them later in her life. Famous among these was her chance meeting with the now famous James Dean. Sheridan's first meeting with Dean was at the studio of a rehearsal club, which was also a supervised boarding house for new actresses. They did not just become friends, but hunted for employment together at the bars. Weird all-night bars and diners, alongside their mutually exclusive romantic conquest of love. Talking about James Dean, she recalled how someone brought Jimmy, as she fondly called him, to her home, and there in their living room they had talked at length, noting that they thereafter became very close friends, and equally went out for dinner a couple of times. The togetherness even drew them closer and friendlier and friendlier, as she puts it before they made up their mind to live together. So we did. It was wonderful, she had said. Then James Dean was just an average young man, still trying to find his fit in the entertainment industry. As Sheridan revealed in her book, the duo's meeting also met some ups and downs. Dean, whose personality is likened to that of a rebel, could not have been tamed by emotion, 
although those who wrote his biography admitted that James Dean, before his death, had once described her as his early crush, although their affair could not last for too long. So when Sheridan later penned down her experience with Dean, she sincerely believed they were each other's first-time romantic love. Hence, she says, we didn't want to be apart. We found a place and lived together. It does appear that they peacefully cohabited at the time, which must have been quite inspiring for the two youths and future stars. And like she stated, he was nobody at the time, so it could only be true love. It was reported that at some point in their affairs they had to travel together en route to Ohio alongside Clyde McCulloch, a major league baseball player at the time. According to her, as a baseball discussion was going on while they were in transit, she had thought of how cosy it would be if she marries Dean because she realised that her name would possibly be Dizzy Dean, which coincided with another famous baseball player's name. Dean, being a man of his kind, was not ready yet for such frivolities, as he was focusing more on his stage work in New York City, and later as a film protagonist in Hollywood. His divided attention made a sure foundation with his love, Sheridan, impossible. So he has to leave without any commitment or related plan only for him to walk away and would never return. Did their relationship actually end? Perhaps yes or no, depending on the angle one is looking at. In Sheridan's opinion, it does appear that she was hoping to see him again. On how she felt about the departure, Sheridan acknowledged thus, he was being hauled away into this career. I couldn't follow him. Sheridan was said to have been engaged to Justice Villa Pancho, but had to ditch the wedding when she realised he wasn't the right man for her. Is that why she had to return to New York? after the breakup and her subsequent return to New York City. She would often attend parties so she could meet new people. It was at one of the parties she attended in New York at this time that she met James Dean again. Was it really like a chance meeting with one's romantic fantasy? Inevitably, the two got together again somehow, but Dean was too busy to understand her needs at the time. So shortly afterward, while they were in a taxi, he had told her that... Nothing's lost between us. You're a part of me and I'm a part of you. I take you with me wherever I go. And painfully, that happened to be the last time she saw him because the cold hands of death said otherwise. After that historic loss of a true friend, she returned to the Caribbean where she met jazz musician William Dale Wales in Puerto Rico. They lived together between 1960 and 2003 before the unfortunate hands of death came knocking on his doors, but the marriage which took place in 1985 produced a beautiful daughter, Stephanie, who is a skillful photographer. In one of her famous remarks referring to her family life, Sheridan declared, I'm so unmotherly. I'm still a flower child somewhere. My daughter was more my friend than my daughter. Her social life was awesome too, as she played along with a few people that shared her vision in life. When she and actress Elizabeth Montgomery were described as best friends, it wasn't just because they had a poetic nickname Dizzy and Lizzie, but they had a lot of things to share as friends. Montgomery, on her part, got her pseudoname Lizzie as an outcome of her performance in the Emmy Award-winning TV movie The Legend of Lizzie Borden. The duo was said to have a common interest in horses and had to regularly visit the Santa Anita racetrack. It may interest you to know that Sheridan's husband, Dale, was alive when she published that detailed account of her as a young dancer, while also exposing her romantic affair with Dean, and when asked how she felt doing that at the time, she said, He thought that would be a really swell idea, because everybody was interested in the fact that I knew Jimmy so well. Well, that may not be all, because interestingly, Liz Sheridan's love story with James Dean would have found its way into the films as she was hoping that the book will become a movie some day, and equally acknowledging the fact that she has been working towards that, but for the fact that all those he knew in the studio had left the scene, otherwise she knew a few persons that would have easily picked it up for a movie production. Liz Sheridan's true love for Dean and the agony upon their separation, coupled with that tragic death of Dean a few years later, may have been underplayed because no one can really feel what she felt. 
and so why the book is indeed a true account of the romantic fantasy of a maiden love, it may turn out to be the opposite if James Dean was still alive, because Dean himself did not confirm the romance, considering also his rebellious personality. There is a chance that he may not feel the same way as Sheridan has said, so the imagery created by Sheridan's book would end the way it started, because Dean, the famous American rebel without a cause, will never have the chance to tell his side of the story. Liz Sheridan died on the 15th of April 2022, when she reached an enviable age of 93 at her home in Manhattan an incident that occurred just five days after the 93rd birthday and was reported to have died quietly in her sleep of natural causes. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. James Dean may have been true love for Liz Sheridan, but James Dean's heart was broken by another woman. Watch this video to find out the story. How Pierre Angeli broke James Dean's heart.